All right, guys, welcome back to the Taj Mahal. Just uh, coming up to 5 p.m. Wednesday, July the 7th. A lot cooler out here tonight. Uh, just struggling to make it past 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and the humidity has dropped down a little bit, so it's quite comfortable to be out in the garage tonight. We are picking up where we left off, and we're just about to measure out the locations for the side marker light that goes on the side of the rear wing here, as well as the uh, badging. There's a TR250 badge that goes on the rear wing. Um, if you've watched my videos for a while, you'll know that these are not the original fenders to this car. These are TR4 fenders. They did not have the badging or the side light uh, on those cars, so we're gonna have to find the locations in these fenders. The fenders are the same, just the TR4 and the 4A did not have the side light or the badging. So as mentioned, these are new fenders to this car. However, the previous fenders that were on this car didn't have the uh, light or the badging installed either. The fenders, if you've been watching for a while on my channel, you know that the previous fenders that were on this car were actually TR6 fenders that had TR4 or 4A pieces grafted onto them to make them fit. So even when I got this car, it did not have the light or markers on the rear wings. I did actually find the lights in the parts bin that came with the car. Here they are. Uh, this is the uh, obviously the backing that goes through the fender. And then the lenses I have over here on my counter. So here are the lenses that go on the lights. The original style lenses. One's in pretty bad shape. Two I think uh, might be rescuable. I have had this one in a parts bin. I think where the, these were the originals that came off the car at some point in its life. Um, I've decided to go new, so here is a new pr reproduction light. Um, they look okay, I'm not quite happy with the uh, lenses, I'd prefer to have the old Lucas stamped lenses, so I think what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to polish these up best as we can and hopefully they'll work on the reproduction uh, lights and um, will look like the original. Not only have I decided to go with the uh, aftermarket reproductions, as far as lights are concerned, we've also got some reproduction badges here from Moss Motors. Uh, these are part number 601115. So these are the original badges that came off the car. I'm not sure if they are actually original to the car. It's possible they might be. Um, there are marking part number markings on the back of these, so uh, it is quite possible that these are original. Now, they're not in that bad of shape. The one problem is uh, this one here has had a stud broken off previously, and as you can see, a new stud has been mounted in there. So um, I was not really wanting to have to drill an off-location uh, hole to uh, use these badges. So we've gone with a new set of badges, as mentioned, from Moss. This one lost both of its mounting tabs, and I suppose I could have stuck that on with some two-sided tape. But uh, we're just going to go ahead and fit some nice new badges. We'll get those unpackaged shortly. And for those of you who might be curious as to what's going on over on this side, um, I've actually got Alin stopping by after work tonight and uh, we're going to do a few things hopefully tonight, at least we're going to attempt to. I'd asked him to come and help me with the uh, bonnet, so we've got the hardware for the bonnet hinges um, ready to go there, and the other thing I thought I could probably get him to give me a hand with is probably installing the windscreen in the windshield frame. So uh, we've got the seals ready to go inside, we'll just bring those out shortly. Uh, we've got all the, uh, I think everything required to do that, and the rubber mallet here, We've got our soapy water standing by. We've got some cord to be able to pull the seal, etc., etc. So hopefully we'll be able to get that glass in uh, tonight without uh, a breakage. And uh, that would be good to check one more thing off the list. So we're just waiting for his arrival at uh, 5.30 to be able to do that. So I think what I'll do is I will start marking out those uh, lights and um, badging on the rear fenders uh, until he gets here. All right, in order to find out the exact location of where the uh, light and the badge are supposed to be located on the rear wing, I actually posted a question to the Triumph Experience forum uh, way back on January 13th, 2019. So I've been preparing for this moment for quite some time. My buddy Skip was one of the uh, first responders to me, and he's provided me with some measurements uh, for location of the light and the badge. So we're going to use that. I had some other responders as well with some photos and some diagrams. So we're going to be following the Triumph Experience uh, forum to be able to get that laid out properly. I'll actually put the link in the description below to the uh, 
address if somebody else is doing this similar job the measurements are there and you can use them on your TR250 or TR5 for that matter all right my helpers arrived He's, <laughs> good afternoon. He's got his after work uh, beer in hand. So we'll let him relax for a minute. So what have I got here? So I mentioned that we have all the bits to do. We're going to do the windscreen first. So we don't have any of the seals on the windscreen currently. So the bottom seal is here. Moss Motors number 680250. And we've got the actual windscreen uh, rubber, which is 680240. Then the uh, chrome are beading, the locking channel, which is uh, Moss Motors 801030. And then we've got the little clip, little join clip that goes in the middle, 801040. So those are the parts that we require for the actual windscreen. Uh, there's my cord there, our soapy water ready to go, rubber mallet standing by got the old seal here I've just dug that out just for a measurement because I know we're gonna have to cut the new seal off and I just wanted to see where they cut the old seal so anyway we'll get to that shortly um, I've got the windscreen glass in the trunk and it's fairly clean I don't think I have to clean it much more I did do some cleaning down here where the old gasket was and you can see a faint line there but it's not too too bad so I do have a uh, spare piece of glass should we meet with unfortunate circumstances, let's say, but I'm hoping that we don't have to use it. So this is the glass that came out of the 250. I'm hoping the glass, this is the glass that goes back in the 250, but we'll see. It will go back. Okay. It will go back one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> in one piece. Yeah, okay, in one piece. That's All right, so we've got the windscreen out, and the first thing we're going to do is fit this bottom seal. So as Ellen was just pointing out, these used to have a little loop here, and they don't even provide that with the loop anymore. Oh, I guess, or actually, it fit through the slot, right? Yeah, actually, there is. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. But for me, it oh yeah, there never is. working. This. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna fit this seal first, and then we'll uh, move on to the next step. All right, the bottom seal is on, and we have any C's on the pins. This is uh, for when Elin uh, inherits the car and he needs to do another restoration in, in, uh, 50, years. in 50 years. Yeah. He'll be able to get the windscreen out again. So, so that's ready to go. So I'll bring it over to the car and we'll sit it down. Okay, and we've got the windscreen back installed on the car. And of course the seal is folded under. So when we push down, we're going to pull that seal out. We're going to be using some plastic uh, sticks to uh, pull that seal out. I think I was telling Alin the last time I did this on my TR6, I used plastic forks and I had the forks lined up all the way along under the seal and that seemed to work, but that was a, a little overkill <laughs> and I wasted a lot of plastic forks. Anyway, uh, so next step is I'm gonna just start uh, feeding the fasteners in here along the uh, windscreen and we'll get this uh, fastened down while we pull the seal out. We're gonna leave this till the end and we'll trim this as required. All right, so we've got the uh, screws started in here and uh, I have put the tonneau fixing uh, mounts in here just in case I want to go with a soft top later on in life. I figured I'd put these in now while I could. And we're just using this uh, plastic tool here to uh, bring the seal out as we push down. So getting her pretty ready and we'll go ahead and we'll do that now. All right, so the windscreen is installed just along the top here. I'm gonna do it the fasteners later, but we've got it in solidly enough so we can actually put the glass in. So uh, that seal went uh, in pretty well. Um, we did get some anti-seize everywhere as per normal, but uh, that'll clean up. So about time to get the glass out and uh, put the seal on the glass. So that's the next step. All right, next step is to put the uh, windscreen seal on the outside. So you wanna put it so that the uh, locking channel is to the front. So you gotta make sure obviously you get it in the right groove. So, <sighs> so many grooves here. Too many grooves. <laughs> and we're going to put the, um, the join at the bottom. I don't know if there is a right or wrong, but we're going to put it at the bottom. So it is what it is. All right, okay, we'll we have the uh, seal on the glass and we're just about to lube it up with some soap and water. And uh, I've got this paracord here as the... Uh, rope we're going to use just a fine cord and uh, we're going to put it in the channel here and uh, <clears throat> maybe I'll set you up on the tripod when we go ahead and try to get it actually in the car all right seal is on cord is in so we're just about uh, ready to move to the car I don't think I'm going to film it I know Alin's got a link 
on his channel or I'll link to his channel where he's doing an install on the TR6 which is obviously similar. Uh, he's using a piece of wire versus a piece of rope and I think that's pretty much the only difference from what we're doing here. Yeah. So uh, I'll link to that video below so you'll have uh, a one-on-one -on -one show with the man <laughs> versus a uh, two-person job. So you can do it with one person but I guarantee it's probably easier with two. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Somebody pushes it down all the time. Yeah. Well, we'll see if it's easier with two people. We might end up killing each other by the end of it, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right. All right. So windscreen is in. So the next uh, thing is to add the locking channel or the locking strip, which goes in here. So we've just uh, sprayed that down with soap and water. Here is the uh, channel or the beading, as I guess it's called. And we'll start that. Uh, we're going to end that down in the middle somewhere, you know, hopefully close to the middle. And then we've got our little joint clip down there. So. Just gonna get a little rubber mallet and we're gonna pound that into the channel, hopefully. Yeah. All right, glass is in successfully with the uh, locking channel and we've got the little trim clip uh, dead center. So we're happy with that. We're just trimming off this uh, excess bottom seal best we can. And then it's gonna be completed. Windscreen is now in. Don't forget the two. Not on the road. Yeah, I, I haven't uh, bolted up the um, the bracketry for the windscreen. We've only got it across the top. So I've got the um, the two nuts, the two nine locks that need to go on to the uh, bottoms of the posts. Plus, I need to actually tighten up the uh, screws that actually hold the bracket. It's hop along around the car. I'm putting I'm putting obstacles around the car. I've got you know engine stands, milk crates. So he has to uh, navigate obstacles too. I was watching your previous video today yeah? and I was like, oh, there's enough room here for me to walk around. And then I come and there's a... I put that there intentionally. <laughs> Trust me, if I can get by there, you can get by there, even when you've got one leg. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, it's looking good. So uh, we're just about... Next job is to uh, have another beer and then uh, we're going to put the bonnet on. So I'm going to get some masking tape out and I'll just mask off some of these areas here just in case and uh, we'll bring the bonnet out from inside the house. All right guys, the uh, bonnet is back on. It's slightly smudged, but I don't think we marked it at all. Did we hit anything with it? We might have touched something a little bit here and there, but I don't think it hurt anything. So I didn't tape the uh, most critical area, which was kind of back here. I forgot to tape back in here, but I think we're okay. So uh, whose fingerprints are those? Mine? Jeez. Anyway, so uh, it's looking good. So what I'm going to do now is obviously I've taken the grill out so I can have access to the bottom of the hinges. And like I said, we've got our hardware here ready to go. We did tap out the holes before we put the, hood, uh, the bonnet on, hood on, whatever you want to call it. So that should be fairly easy to hook up the uh, hinge points and then I'll be able to uh, play with it a little bit. What I'm going to do is I want to make sure I've got it fully bolted up as far as the hinges are concerned. But I also want to put my strut prop rods on because that can affect the uh, position of the hood as well. So, and I also want to put my bonnet uh, catch on. So I want to get this fully installed and locked down in order to get the, uh, the line up on the fenders where this ghost stripe comes across. So once this is all installed fully, then we'll uh, mark out the location for the uh, fender side stripes. That makes sense? All right, that's it for tonight. We can finish up our beer, and then uh, I think that I'm drinking beer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call it a night. Actually, it's been uh, well, it's quarter to eight, so I've been out here for a few hours anyway. And uh, anyway, we got done what we needed to get done. Yeah. So I'm happy. Thanks for the help. Okay. All right, guys, welcome back. Now Thursday, and uh, we're just about to pick up where we left off. So we've got the bonnet just resting here on the body tub. And we're about to uh, add the hardware to the hinges. So we've got that standing by. So we're going to get this uh, hood bonnet fitted up fully. As mentioned previously, at least we're going to get the hinges bolted up right now. So when I do some work on the back here, as mentioned previously, I need to do the uh, marker light and the badging on the rear fender. And uh, before I start drilling and vibrating the body tub, I wanted to make sure that I had this bolted up so it didn't actually slide off or move around when I was doing the work on the rear of the car. So uh, first job for the day will to be uh, put the, uh, the bolts in, uh, the hinge points to get this uh, secured in place. All right guys, I've been playing around with the bonnet for a couple of hours and just working on uh, the gaps and uh, 
They're looking pretty good. I'm happy with the uh, side gaps and I'm happy with this gap. However, it's got to probably go forward about an eighth of an inch as I'm a little shy just a tiny bit on my front fender to bonnet here. This can probably come forward just a touch on both sides and I want to make sure obviously I get that located properly because that will affect obviously where the stripes are going to go across the sides of the fenders. So that's got to be spot on before I do any measurements. So I think what we'll do is we'll loosen the bonnet hinges one more time and uh, we'll just bring that bonnet a little bit forward. Uh, it won't make the gap too bad in the back here. It's looking pretty good right now, pretty consistent all the way across. It could probably go forward an eighth of an inch without being too much of a hassle. And it'll give me some clearance on my little vent here, my little pop-up. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll loosen the hinges off, pull the bonnet forward slightly, and then we should be good as far as adjustment on the bonnet is concerned. I have left it a little higher than I would normally because remember there's going to be beading that goes in the fender here that's going to sit above the fender. So I want the beading to be equal with the edges of the bonnet as well. So there's going to be obviously be some fine tuning, but it's more or less fore and aft that I want to get properly to, in order to get that stripe marked out. All right, so we'll uh, go ahead and we'll make that final adjustment and we'll take some measurements for where that side stripe is going to be. All right, we played around with the bonnet a bit more and we've got it uh, sitting a little bit better here at the front. So I'm happy with that now. So I'm pretty sure the hood is going to be where it is now. I'd be happy if I could get back on the car aligned the way it is now. The only thing I still need to do is to put the bonnet struts on and put the catch on just to make sure that nothing changes with those two additions. So we'll do that shortly. I'm going to take a little bit of break from uh, fitting and playing around with the hood. It's just uh, becoming a little bit monotonous at this point. And we're finally going to go back and we're going to start working on the uh, badge. We're going to do a little something different. We'll do the badging and the light on that rear fender that I've been threatening to do for the last day or two. So we'll go and do that now. All right, I like measuring almost as much as I like doing math. But here it goes. So uh, I don't know if you'd be able to see this. So the top of the badge is six and one eighth inch down from this body line. That will be the top of the badge, so the actual top of the badge. So that's this line here, all right? Then it is 10 and 5 eighths of an inch in from the wheel well. So that is that line there. So the pins are 3 eighths of an inch down from the top of the badge. So that's this line here. Then the pins are 3 quarters of an inch in from the edge of the badge. This way. So that's that line there. So that will be my first hole. And then we'll drill the second hole based off of that. So here we go. Drilling holes in freshly bodyworked panels. Wish me luck. All right, first badge is on, and I think it looks pretty good. Gonna have to live with it. The holes are drilled now. No, I think it looks good, as far as I can tell. So if it's good to me, I guess that's all that matters, right? So let's go for the marker light. All right, just now. about to start working on the light mount or light location. So the first thing we're going to do is drill this uh, relief for the actual light itself, this little piece here in the middle. So what I've done is I've measured between the pins on the badge. That is four inches from pin to pin. So half of that is two, so that is the middle of the badge. So I've just extended that down. The length between the pins, the center of the pins on the badge, and these little uh, mounts here is one inch and nine sixteenths. So we've run a line across there. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill where the line intersects for the uh, light and then we'll figure out the locations for the actual studs. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, we've got the light just sitting in there. We've uh, drilled the hole out with a uh, step drill. We did a pilot and then a couple different step drills. I went to uh, my smallest step drill then we moved up. This one's getting a little dull. So uh, we had to make do with what we had. Now one quick note, doesn't look to me like the studs on the back of this badge are centered. So you won't be able to drill based on where they should be. I'm gonna have to drill based on where they are. So what I'm probably gonna do in this case is I'm probably gonna uh, get my Sharpie out and I'm just gonna blacken the ends of the studs. I know they need to be on this line for level but uh, we'll block at the ends of the studs and then we'll just push it in until it touches the panel and wherever it leaves an imprint from the Sharpie. 
will actually drill the holes there for the two studs in the back of this light. May not be the uh, best idea, but it always seems to work for me. No second guessing anyway, so that's what we're going to do. Stand by. Alright, you can probably get a little bit better idea of how not centered those studs are based on the two holes I just drilled. So there you go. We'll enlarge those and uh, we'll get the light fitted up and we'll come back. Alright, driver's side is done and I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty level. If it wasn't it would bug me and it seems like it's going to be okay so it must be fairly level because my eyes usually pretty good at picking that kind of thing up. So I'm happy with that. I'm actually happy to see the uh, badge and the light on the rear fender. As I mentioned this car didn't come with it and it should have it. It's one of those uh, distinguishing features of this car. The TR4A and the uh, TR4 did not have it nor did the TR6 have anything like that either since it had the wraparound tail lights. So yeah I'm quite happy with that. I'm stoked as the surfers would say. So let's move on to the other side and see if we can duplicate the success of the uh, driver's side. Alright, passenger side is now complete and I have to say that I'm happy that I uh, did change my mind and actually put these on the car while the wings were still in primer. Made it a little bit easier, a little less stressful to uh, drill the holes. Can you imagine doing this layout and drilling on fresh paint? Um, that's why I decided to go ahead and do it now while I could. So that's why I put the fenders on the car and in the end I'm happy I did that and took the extra step. Alright, so that project is done. We're probably going to call it a night out here and go in and grab some dinner. But uh, we've got a few things accomplished on the car anyway. I think we'll upload what we have so you can see where I'm at. And uh, again, it's good to see the windscreen on the car. It's good to see the bonnet on the car. Good to have the TR250 markers and the uh, lights on. And uh, Wish I could put the uh, the trunk lid on, but again, no sense in really putting it on. I may put the seal on. We've got the seal and the trunk ready to go. Uh, but there's no sense really in putting the uh, the boot lid on, other than just to uh, get it out of the way and keep it safe. Uh, there's not really any sense to put it on because it'll have to come off for me to uh, put the fenders on, the rear fenders on anyway. It'll just give me a little bit better access. So, we'll keep it off now and resist the urge to put it on. At least that's what I'm saying today. Alright, thanks for watching guys. We'll see you tomorrow.